Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I want to talk about Cryptocryony species. This species of the plant has been one of my favourite ones to keep over the many years I've been keeping planted tanks. I also think they're really good for beginner plant keepers too. They grow really well in low-tech setups, so you don't need to worry too much about lighting, CO2 and fertilisers. Cryptocryonies come in many different colours. You can find them in red, green, brown, bronze and many other different colours. They can add such a big burst of colour into your aquascape, and they can also act as a really good focal point or feature plant too. In my jungle aquascape aquarium you see here, I'm using about 5 different species of Cryptocryony. In the back left of the aquarium we got some Cryptocryony 1CI green, and then right in front of that we got some Cryptocryony legro. Then towards the back of the aquarium in the middle we got some Cryptocryony balancei. That's the one with the leaves that are draped over the surface of the water. And then right in the centre mid ground of the aquarium we got some Cryptocryony 1CI tropica. Finally in the right hand side of the aquarium we have some Cryptocryony 1CI green gecko. I think a good place to start is talking about the substrate you'll need to keep these plants. Most Cryptocryony species are heavy root feeders. This means most of the nutrients the plant needs to grow will come from the substrate. In my experience, many of the aquasoils available do a really good job for these crypts. I've been using ADA Aquasoil Amazonia. This substrate contains a lot of nutrients and organic acids, which is really good for growing aquarium plants. These aquasoils may be a little bit more expensive, but they're really worth it in the long run. The Tropica Aquasoil is also very similar to the ADA Aquasoil. It's a little bit cheaper, but it's still a really good substrate to use. The more you invest in your substrate, the easier it will be to grow these crypts. This is really important as it can help the plant recover from crypt melt. We'll talk more about this later on in the video. If you're on a budget though, you could use pea gravel and supplement the substrate with some Tropica root tabs. If you place the root tabs near where you plant the crypts, it'll give them a nice little boost in nutrients. Now let's move on to the lighting requirements you'll need to grow crypts. Most Cryptocryony species will do well in low light conditions. The only ones I can think of that need high lighting conditions are the smaller Cryptocryony species, such as Cryptocryony parva. For low light plants, you should aim to get about 10 to 20 lumens per litre of water. This will be a nice amount of light for the crypts. However, they will be growing at a slower rate. If you do want to increase your growth rate, you could turn the lighting up to a medium setting. For a medium setting, you're aiming for about 20 to 40 lumens per litre of water. If you do do this, you will have to make sure you balance out your first slides and water changes too. Otherwise, you can end up with algae issues if your system becomes unbalanced. In my setup you see here, I'm running about 25 lumens per litre of water. I'm also using a twin star LED light. I think that this lighting unit provides a really good spectrum of light for the plants. Let's talk about nutrients for the crypts. Most crypt species aren't demanding when it comes to nutrients, as they tend to get most of their nutrients from the substrate as they're heavy root feeders. You can supplement the growth with some fertilizers though. I like to use the Tropica Specialized Nutrition. This fertilizer contains nitrogen and phosphorus, along with iron, manganese, and several other vital micronutrients. I like to dose my tank twice a week and I haven't seen any nutrient deficiencies yet. At the moment, I am dosing two mils of the fertilizer into the tank, but I can easily increase the dosage if there was any nutrient deficiencies in the plants. You don't need pressurized CO2 to grow crypts. But if you want to have faster growth, you can use pressurized CO2. Along with the Tropica Specialized Nutrition, I also dose the tank with a little bit of liquid CO2. Although liquid CO2 doesn't really provide the plant with carbon dioxide, it does act as an algicide, which will help to keep any algae at bay on this slower growing plant. Just like the Tropica Specialized Nutrition, I'm dosing 2 mils of this every week. Here I'm going to show you how to prepare your crypts for planting. When you buy your crypts, they're usually sold in the pot. The first thing you're going to need to do is remove as much of the rock wall off the plant as you can. Be careful when you do this as you don't want to damage the plant's delicate root system. Something really useful to do is cut the roots back so they're about an inch long. This will help to promote new growth when planted in your aquarium. Next you're going to gently separate the main mother plant into separate individual plantlets. When you split the larger mother crypt into smaller individual plantlets, it will allow you to cover a larger surface area across your aquarium. And then after several months after the crypt starts to grow and mature, they'll start to cover out these areas a lot more. Now you can see the benefits of splitting the main mother plant into little individual plantlets. Instead of one big plant, we have eight individual little plantlets. This will also make it a lot easier to plant the plant. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, crypts can go through a phase called crypt melt. This process usually happens when you add new crypts to your aquarium. When you buy your cryptocryonies, they're in their immersed state. These plants are grown above water before they're sold to you. When the plant is in their immersed state, they have larger, broader, rounded leaves, just like the potted crypt you can see in the video here. When you plant your crypts underwater, the immersed leaves will start to die off. This is because the immersed leaves aren't adapted to growing underwater. So once the immersed leaves have died off, the plant will start to grow its submersed leaves instead. These leaves are more adapted to grow underwater. The problem with crypt melt is that the dead dying leaves produced by the plant can lead to an increase in organic matter in your aquarium. The more organic matter there is in the water column, the more chances are that algae will grow. So a little tip to prevent crypt melt is just by cutting all the leaves off before you plant them into your aquarium. This will prevent you from having any dead or dying leaves decaying away in your water column. I found that when you use this method of cutting the leaves before you plant them into your aquarium, you get newer growth quicker. Here's some footage about a month after I tried this method. You can see there's some new nice healthy growth on the crypts. I think this is a really good tip when planting crypts. The new growth is really healthy and the plant has survived the crypt melt phase. I made another video on this so if you want to see that I'll leave a little card in the top right of this video. Planting crypts is super easy. Having some aquascaping tweezers makes it even easier. 
straight tweezers will do the job just fine, but if you need to plant them in a really awkward angle, you could use angled tweezers too. I'm just going to use my Hillstream Aquarium as a demo to show you how to plant grips. All you need to do is hold the plant in between the tweezers and gently press the plant into the substrate so the roots are covered and slowly pull out the tweezers from the substrate while gently releasing your grip off the tweezers. Since we are on the topic on how to plant your crypts, let's also talk about where you should plant your crypts. Most crypts can grow to be about 15 to 30 centimeters in length, but smaller varieties like Cryptocarni Parva will grow to be about 15 centimeters max, and your taller varieties such as your Cryptocarni Balancei will grow to be about 30 to 45 centimeters in length. Crypts such as Cryptocarni Wender Ti should be planted in the mid ground of the aquarium. Since crypts do grow to be a good size, they can fill out an aquascape really nicely. In my opinion, I think they look really good when they're planted near to hardscape. Trimming crypts is really easy to do. There are two different methods you can try. One method you could try is to cut the leaf as close to the rootstalk as possible. Having a set of sharp aquascaping scissors makes it so much easier to cut crypts. This method is my favourite way of cutting crypts. The footage you see here is me doing this method. It's a really quick method of cutting crypts. Having a set of angled scissors makes it easier to cut the crypts that are planted in awkward angles. However, there is a little bit of a disadvantage of using this method. A part of the stem of the leaf you don't end up cutting away will start to die off in your aquarium, but if you cut as close as you can to the rootstalk, it will help to reduce this problem. If you have shrimp in your aquarium, they tend to enjoy eating this bit of decaying plant matter. I've also noticed that autosynchronous catfish really enjoy eating this stuff too. I've also noticed when I do this method, the crypts tend to be a bit more bushier. This really helps to fill out the space in your aquascape. The second method I'm going to talk about is a little bit more labour intensive. This method involves you gently pulling away the stem from the rootstalk. Overall, this is a better method to trim your crypts, but it will take longer to do. It does avoid the issue of dead plant matter decaying away in your water column. Ultimately, it's your choice which method you decide to use. I prefer to use the first method as it's way quicker. Now we've pretty much gone over all the main points you need to know on how to keep cryptocurrency species. I just want to give you guys some more random information about these crypts. If you want to find cryptocurrency species in the wild, you'll be looking around Southeast Asia. They are a widespread species. You can find them from Western India to New Guinea to South China and even North Vietnam. They can be found living in fast or slow flowing rivers. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, they can be found living submerged or immersed. Finally, did you know there's a pink variety of cryptocurrency? The variety is called Cryptocurrency Wendtii Pink Flamingo. So this has been my plan guide on how to keep cryptocurrency species. They really are such an easy plant to keep, and they'll grow really well in pretty much any tank. I think these are one of the best plants to keep if you have a low-tech setup. Let me know in the comments below if you keep crypts in your planted tank. I'm really interested to see what species everyone keeps. And just before I end this video, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who watched this far into the video. I just want to let you all know that almost 94% of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you want to see my videos as soon as I post them to the channel, please subscribe. The channel's getting so close to a thousand subscribers, so if you can help me out, that'd be great. And just one more thing before I go, if you found this video useful and learnt something new, give it a like, it really helps the video out a lot. 